Hello again, this is Galen Pickett, Physics 151 um, at Cal State Long Beach. So we're moving on into the momentum principle. We talked about what momentum was in um, section 1.8, and now I want to talk about the momentum principle itself. And there is the section of the ebook or the uh, physical book that you should be looking at referring um, to to uh, to do these problems in your web assign. Um, so let's scroll back up to there and then to my notes. So I want to start with um, section two here. Section two lists one of the great principles of physics that has been discovered um, that brings together lots of ideas that people like Newton and Galileo were really struggling with. So everything that you've ever heard about forces, particularly if you've taken a physics course before, comes down to a specialization of this big principle. And this principle says how the surroundings change the momentum of a system. So here's a physical situation. Again, we've got this data that shows the position of an object at different times. So we have an object that is coming in at a constant velocity. You see this delta r from one time to the next is the same. So there is some constant initial velocity. And then after some force is acted, there's a constant final velocity. See how these points are um, equally spaced, pointing in a straight line. So there is the velocity of the object has changed. And it's changed because there was an interaction from the surroundings. This force has acted, and it acted in this direction. Um, the force is the thing that, that the surroundings use to interact with the system. The force is the means by which the momentum of the system changes. So we have this definition, this basic definition of what the velocity does to the position. And uh, your book calls this the position update idea, so that the final position of an object is equal to its initial position plus however much time went by times the quantity, the physical quantity that changes the position. That's what the velocity is. The velocity is responsible for changing the position. A parallel construction is the final momentum that the object or the system has is equal to the initial momentum of the system plus the thing from the surroundings that changes the momentum and that's called the impulse the impulse from the surroundings so the momentum of the system is not the same value it was because there was a force from the surroundings and this force is measured in units uh, that we call Newtons in honor of Isaac Newton, the man who um, invented this entire branch of, um, of human endeavor. So force changes the momentum. We can figure out what the units of a Newton are by looking at this momentum principle as it's stated for a constant force. We've got something that has units of a momentum is equal to something with units of a force times a time. So. Here are what the units of momentum are. There's a mass and a uh, velocity, meters per second. That's got to be a newton times a second. So, and a newton is the unit that we're going to use to, um, to, to measure the magnitude of these forces. If you treat these quantities as algebraic, you can just divide both sides of this equation by seconds and determine that a newton is equal to one kilogram meters per second squared. That's the CG. That's the, um, the SI unit for um, for Newton. There's other units that Newton that you may want to use, like a, a the imperial unit, the English imperial unit of force is a pound. So a pound and a Newton measure the same thing. The tendency of the of the surroundings to change the momentum of the system. The amount of the change depends on how long how long the interaction takes place. Just as the final position will be different from the initial position depending on how long you let that average velocity act. For a longer time, you're going to wind up farther away from your initial spot. For a longer time, your final momentum is going to be different from your initial momentum. So let's take a look at an example here. Here we have a falling object. It starts right here with a velocity equal to zero. Here is the z direction pointing upwards. And after a time delta t, it's sitting right there. And you can see what its final velocity is. It's now no longer zero. Now the force from the surroundings in this case, the object is the system, the force is uh, the weight from the surroundings. It is a vector that points downward. So the thing I want to know is, what is the final momentum if it starts from rest? And I'm going to answer this question in the, um, in the problem solving format that, um, that we're going to be using in this course. So the director for this problem says, this is a direct application of the momentum principle. Uh, frequently um, uh, 
I'll, I'll frequently just say the momentum principle is MP. That's the abbreviation I'll use. That's the main idea. What are the knowns in the problem? The knowns, well, let's say I know what the mass of the particle is. I know what its initial velocity is because it starts from rest. And I'll write that as a zero vector. I don't need any coordinates or anything to say anything about that. Um, I know how much time goes by, delta t. What's unknown, I don't know the final momentum. I don't know the final velocity. Those are the two quantities I do not know. There's other quantities I don't know, but you know, like how far the octet has gone, that'll be the subject of a different uh, discussion. Right now, I've just been asked for what is the final momentum under these circumstances. So I have two unknowns here. The thing that I'm looking for is the final momentum, so I will circle that. And now the director's job is done. I know basically the idea I need to use. Here's a list of the knowns and the unknowns and the thing I'm looking for. So the investigator is the one that sets this up. And I'm going to need an origin. Um, a real convenient, you can never go wrong in your choice of origin, but I'm going to choose my origin where the object is released. So I'll put 0, 0, 0 there is our initial. That's one of the givens. So that's the initial position. V initial as a vector is equal to 0, 0, 0. And I'll write that as meters per second. And that one was just meters. There's the initial spot. Here is the final spot. It has a final velocity. And um, this happened at a time delta t. So let's say that um, that's the x direction. That is the z direction. And then the uh, y direction would be going in. So now I've got a diagram with all the quantities on it that I would need. So now. First, let's use the definition of momentum. That's what this system owns. So there's one other idea I need here. So I'll go and amend my ideas list. Definition of momentum. Now I'm feeling a little bit better about this because I have two ideas and two unknowns. In other words, I'm going to get two statements, two equations, and two unknowns, and therefore have a, set, uh, have, have a solution that I can get. Nonetheless, the definition of the momentum, in this case, an object not falling with a relativistic speed, it's just an object that has been dropped. Um, I've got the momentum of the system is equal to the mass times the current value of the, of the velocity. So I'm going to specialize this to now. I'm going to apply this to the momentum principle. So I have the final momentum, p final, which is equal to mass times v final is equal to the initial momentum. This is what the momentum principle says. This is the momentum update form of the momentum principle. Initial momentum plus delta t times the force from the surroundings. In this case, the force from the surroundings is the weight. And that is the momentum principle. Number one, the definition of the momentum here, um, let's say that um, p final is equal to m times v final. That's equation number two. So I have two equations, two unknowns. I'm going to be able to solve this for the final momentum. Two equations, two unknowns. So now I can go on to the next step of the problem, execution. Um, actually, I've got equation number two built into equation number one there. I get directly that p final is equal to p initial, which is 0 plus delta t times the weight. And so there's my answer. Um, skeptic review. I mean, I've, I've solved for the, I've done the elementary um, algebra to get my answer, and now I need to review this. First, the units of p final should be kilogram meters per second. I don't know if that matches delta t times the weight. Well, delta t is some number of seconds, and the weight is some number of newtons. That's a second times a, uh, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Notice that these seconds cancel off, so I get kilogram meters per second. So at least this has got the correct units, and there are no unknowns in the answer. I have to do both of those two things in order to satisfy the, uh, the very first part of the skeptic check. And now 
we check behavior. I've got p final is equal to plus delta t times weight. And you could think to yourself, should, should not OULD should not the object fall. Doesn't have to go down. But here I have a plus. Well, let's see what this means in terms of this is what the vector statement is. Let's see what this looks like for the z component. The final momentum in the z direction, I'll just write that p final sub z is equal to delta t times the z component of the weight. The weight points downward, so it has a minus, and it is, I'll just write it as w. Don't know what its magnitude is yet. It is something that doesn't change. So I get that the final momentum in the z direction is minus delta t times w, where w is equal to the magnitude of the weight vector. Now, you may want to say that the, the w is a negative, but it's, it's a magnitude, so it is a positive number. So here, it, I can see directly that it is going downward. The z component, so the z component is negative. The z component is negative. That is the plus z direction. If there's a negative component to the momentum, that means it's going downward. And those are the checks that we're going to do. So I know how fast, I know what it's going. If I even wanted to know how fast it was going, that was not what was being asked for, I could tell you what v final was. v final in the z component would be p final z divided by m, and that would be minus delta t w divided by m. So I could tell you how fast it was going if I wanted to. It wasn't what the question was, but I got what the final momentum is, and now I got what the final velocity is. And that's as far as I needed to go.